I was young, very young, lived in a big city, Baton Rouge, and I walked that night with no self-defense things or anything. What's good, y'all? It's the Doom Shirts React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today, we are back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys. All right, join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized that you no longer fear? No, oh, this is fun. Okay, in the last 10 years, I've lived in three different countries that aren't America, and the first thing would definitely be healthcare. I found myself in the hospital maybe several times. A anesthesia, stitches, IV fluids, IV meds, whatever. Never paid more than 50 bucks. Never. Um, let's see, walking alone as a girl at night. Uh, that can be never different Never had to worry the, uh, about country. like someone jumping me or shooting me or whatever out of nowhere. Never had a weapon on me, nothing. Now I always carry a weapon. Never walk alone. Well, I try not to walk alone. Um, just would wouldn't really do it here now uh calling in sick calling in sick would you feel um and this is a question that's i'm gonna ask mm -hmm. you see era my baby would you feel like you would still have to keep your head on a swivel outside the country knowing that you're not from that location knowing that you don't know what the background history mm -hmm. is on that location yes. though you have been told verbally you have nothing to worry about but yet your experience there is your first experience only would you keep your head on a swivel regardless. I think I would, honestly. Because, for one, when people look at me for the first, first time, they think I'm a kid because I'm short. Okay. Um, second of all, just because if I don't know the history... First of all, I'm not going to go anywhere where my where I'm not accepted. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm right. not going to go nowhere where I'm not accepted. But still, until I get a feel of a place, I have to... No, really and I think though. it's so embedded in me for because of my upbringing, mm -hmm. where we're from, that I'm always gonna be like that. Not nah, bad. Ask me. Do you think you'll be? Man, you know, you you <laughs> will be. Your head, while your head do be on the. You trying to say my neck long? What you trying to say? No, say I was it, gonna just say, say like it. you don't go outside and have to worry about half the things I worry about. No, but I was gonna say that if I'm with my family, yes. 100%. I was going to say that. I was going to say your your head is always on the swivel because you're taking care of, what, four other people? Right, yeah. So. Yeah, my head will be on the swivel. Think, but if my head wasn't, a, if I was alone, uh, I no, I don't really worry. I don't worry. I will keep my head on the swivel, though. Not like, not harsh, like. And see. Like, I wouldn't be doing <laughs> yeah, all that. No, just being aware very of your aware, surroundings. Very aware, very focused. And, yep. and I think another part of that is because I had a military dad. I'm so shout much out to, more, Shout out to Pops. Shout out to Pops. You know, it's embedded in me. Facts, facts, Regardless facts. of whatever country I'm in. I think in. all women should, regardless. Yeah. I think all women should. Um, You can call and sick in other countries, and your boss isn't going to make you feel like a terrible person, and, like, you're just the worst person on the planet for missing a day of your job where they're working you to death and probably not paying you enough. And, uh, yeah. Um, ugh. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized that you no longer fear? Jamaica. Because living in a... The things that I no longer feared when I moved out the country. I no longer feared the police in any capacity. There was police in Jamaica that had assault rifles as their normal weapon. And I still felt comfort and ease around them. I no longer felt outnumbered in, well, any situation. Because quite literally, everyone around me yeah, was yeah. black. Yeah. I no longer felt the fear of exploring. Like how you feel here. Because when I go places, I love to explore and go through neighborhoods and see things and stuff like that. In America... <laughs> You end up in the wrong neighborhood, that could be a death sentence. Yeah, but when yeah. I was out of the country, in Jamaica, I could explore any neighborhood, anywhere, and nobody be asking crazy questions like, who are you, where you belong, this, that, and the third. I no longer feared the end of the month and my cost of living. Because in Jamaica, I ended up paying 
about three hundred dollars in bills a month. Wow. Versus here, where I'm paying over five grand sometimes. Mm -hmm. Speak on oh, it. Oh, that's some facts. I never feared the people that you know somebody could be having a bad day, and then that be it for me, my life, and my daughter. Yeah. Instead, the people were nice and friendly, and this, that, and the third. <laughs> I never feared expressing myself and who I was. I actually trained Did they give him drastically music more mm -hmm. when I was the there because they I felt less judged oh. and I felt more comfortable to be myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, we feel you. I brother. never feared for my life. I never feared for my well being. I never feared losing my life to gun violence. I never feared anything like that. And yes, I'm aware that countries have their own problems. And yes, Jamaica has a few. But none of them concern me too much because none of them happen to me. You don't understand how many things you really fear or how many things you actually have become accustomed to or fearing until you leave. Because I have never felt more at ease. I've never felt more peaceful. You know how many times I fell asleep with my door wide open? <laughs> And nothing happened except maybe a crab broke in. A crab. <laughs> you know how many times I would just be out walking around, no weapon on me whatsoever, run into a group of people and be like, oh, hey, what's up, what's up? No need for social anxiety or nothing. That's a new one, It yeah. was freeing. It was peaceful. And it's home to me. Jamaica is always feeling like home to me. If you're an American yes, musical, uh, what are the things okay, you realize that you unpack. no longer fear? Hold up. Well, we can't said, unpack everything. Not everything, Because we've um, <laughs> discussed a lot of what he said on the channel before. Um, but one thing, I don't know why, I don't know if he mentioned something that made me think of this. But when we say that we want to be around more people who look like us. Yes, it, it gives us security of being around more people who look like us. But if we all like join forces on that like hey we just went all black neighborhoods this and that don't y'all think it's gonna revert back to the past where we were not allowed to buy homes in certain neighborhoods and and all that you know so yeah. it's, it's like a double standards <clears throat> kind of right there you know like yeah like I, I don't think i would support that because no you're not gonna tell me where i can live and where i can't live don't take my freedom from me, you know? Yeah, I feel what you're saying. Yeah, I feel so, what you're saying. But, yeah, the the freedom to not have social anxiety or ending up in a bad neighborhood, wrong neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Very important stuff you mentioned. Um, but, again, like, the United States is so different. Like, a, a city can have so many different areas. Like, we have... Went to sleep with our door wide open before. We have. Multiple occasions. And we'll yes. wake up the next one and like, what the what? Did the wind blow in or what? Like, what's missing? But at the end yeah. of the day, it's like the door was wide open and nothing happened. Yeah. One time, the door was literally wide open. Remember? Yep. I was pregnant. My friend called me. She was like, are y'all okay? Mm-hmm. And we slept like that all night and didn't know anything. So. What type of work we was doing? I was pregnant. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, up. but me don't like, because I could have just checked the door and stopped the door from doing what it was doing. You know, that's when we was working our behinds off. Okay. Hey, what type of work we was doing? Is living in Australia and New Zealand, the UK, um, the Americans I've spoken to here, um, they all have the same stories about how they, um, they saw a fight break out across the room um when they were out at a pub or something like that and they realized they no longer fear that it could escalate into gunshots mm. um when they 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 all have stories about fireworks and realizing the day they realized that they're always fireworks now um they realized that they've been through an entire year and not had to worry about taxes because uh oh. taxes are just calculated <laughs> for you um and they don't fear that they could get those wrong mm. uh they got ill and went to the hospital and they realized they don't fear what it could cost anymore um, they had an interaction with the police and they weren't afraid. Um, they, um, they requested time off from their boss and their boss was just wondering why they made a big deal out of it. And they just said, book mm -hmm. it in the system because they get four, five, six paid weeks off now and it's no longer an issue. Um, there's loads of things. So tell me your stories. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized? Okay, so one of the That's things good. that he talked about in the first girl talked about too, the sick, the sick leave. And we've learned a lot about sick leaves in yeah. other countries. Yep, yep. Um, 
you know, the past few months. And I really think that that's, it's a sick leave. Why are, why do we have to explain why we're sick? Why do we have to explain our innocence or our truth to, to, um, you know. Any HR or any, um, supervisor to have at that time, who you got to report to. Um, yeah, I just feel like that don't make sense. Like, it don't don't have to be documented that I'm, I have an emergency and I got to express and explain every single detail about the emergency. Like, y'all ain't about to be there anyway, so. Right. And I remember one time I called in sick because my son was sick. And it was like, well, you're not sick. You get somebody to watch your son. I'm like, you get another employee. Right. And I'm like, I have to leave work early because I have to go pick up my son. They'd be like, well, the shift for you don't end. I said, oh, better yet, we have another load that's coming in that you can help with. Y'all didn't hear me gotta go right he's gonna be at school but alone right what y'all want me to do like they want you to prioritize the job and not your family not your home your life i think those those higher power people like those supervisors and those bosses they don't really take in consideration what the employee has to say because they're thinking about their self mm-hmm. and what uh, situations and they have to deal with whenever the boss comes to them and be like so why y'all sharp or we let somebody go home today. But what you mean? Then they will get chewed out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So they try to avoid those type of things. But I think at the end of the day, your position and your power has some type of uh, value where your voice can be heard as well to your high power. Right. So you can acknowledge the people beneath you. All right. They need to treat their employees better. Don't you hate when they would be like, um, y'all know we shorthanded today. They ain't got but I to need y'all me. to work extra hard. Like, child. What they got to do with people? Right. Um, Making the people overwork because of your loss. Right. I don't know. It's going to get done. How it get done? No longer fit. I'm an American living abroad in Australia, Central Coast, New South Wales. Australia. Yeah. For about two months. Everything this guy says is 100% accurate. I was on a train from Melbourne to Sydney yesterday. Two people got into a full on fight. Cops were called. It happened right next to me. And not once did I think that it might escalate to gunshots. You know why? Because no one has a fucking gun here, bro. It's that simple. Like, you don't feel as scared, bro. There's a lot less intensity in these social situations, especially with cops. Like, I'm not scared of cops, bro. I'm not even in the U.S. because I personally have nothing to hide. But you're not worried about that type of stuff here because I know for a fact that Aussie police are not going to think that I may have a gun. It's just, it's like 99.9% of people here do not have guns. And you just feel a lot now nah, we definitely heard that before. And it's sad, though, because, like, when you're in the U.S. and a police officer does come to the de escalate a fight, it's probably going to take about four more people with them for free. Yeah. It's, it's Anybody the that's extra like close cop cars to it. for me that, be, that makes me anxious. That's why we don't call, you know, when we have, like, domestic issues with family members or friends or, you know. Strangers that strangers, stand, stand by. Especially if, if they are black. Let's just be honest. We particularly don't call the cops unless it's something that really need their them for. Right. You know right? what I because, don't? I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> because we don't want it to escalate to something that it shouldn't escalate to. Or it be that time whenever the cop get a call or a tip saying something is going on that the person is not 100% sure with and the cop goes to try to investigate something that he don't even know what he about to walk into. Mm. And then he start questioning a random person. My, my intent is like, why not just go back to the person that actually made the tip call and get your information from them? Right. And then you can use that as your information instead of going to find somebody to escalate a situation that you don't know 100% on. Yeah. It don't, or, it, don't, it don't make sense. Exactly. Or if it's a wellness check and they go in fully armed. For a wellness don't check. Ever call don't call a wellness <laughs> check for me. Please don't. Please don't call a wellness check. Nah, it don't make sense. Mm-mm, none. Safer with everything you go, even in the worst parts of this country, you're going to feel a lot safer because you know that no one's going to rob you at fucking gunpoint. And it's just how it is. Oh, patty mouth. He's been in but Australia too long. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Walking around alone at night. I'm an American and I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. The first time I came here, I was studying abroad, so I was like 19 or 20. And I remember walking home from a bar by myself at like 3.30 in the morning and realizing I felt so safe. I didn't like have my phone out ready to call 911 or 112. Didn't have my keys out ready for self-defense if I needed it. I was just walking and I wasn't worried. And I've never not been worried when I've been walking alone by myself at night in the US. And I think that was one of the moments where I was like, I would really like to live here. And now I do. And honestly, I've never felt unsafe at night. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've... Okay. So, again, for those who don't know, we're from the... 
people in the, the people in the comment section say it. <laughs> okay. We're from the South. Facts, um, facts. And y'all know we have shared a lot of stories about our life, um, throughout life, our life experiences. I walked at night a lot as a child, especially with daylight savings time, um, because I would have after school activities. So I would start walking home like around five o'clock. I was young, very young, lived in a big city, Baton Rouge, and I walked at night with no self defense things or anything. So and my house a, wasn't across the street. Yeah, but as a kid, I don't think we 100% think on that type of stuff. But our parents do. Oh, 100% they and, do. And my mom was okay with me walking at night because not everywhere in the United States is scary or meant to be scary because you have neighbors or people who live in these communities who are going to look out for you. Mm -hmm. That's the type of neighborhoods we grew up in. Yeah. The, the adults, no matter how old they are, even older children, they're going to look out for you. Nah, of course, there's I remember. people. No, nah, I know. Go ahead. Yeah, of course, there's people out to do bad. But as a young girl who regularly walk home at night, I wasn't scared. Yeah, I remember I was leaving the gas station. Like I was just hopping in my car, and I was riding my windows down. And then I seen a car pull up on like maybe three kids. One had a bike, two was walking, and the gentleman was like, "Hey, where y'all supposed to be at, bro? It's late out here." Exactly. There's like y'all ain't put y'all. Mama ain't look out looking for y'all. Y'all need to get in the house. And as he drove off, he screamed, go home. <laughs> I was like, yeah, exactly. That's how it is, though. You will have locations where the people are going to look out for you because they got right. your best interest. They know what type of environment we, we, we deal with. You right. know? And even as adults like we are now, if we saw a kid walking home at night, first of all, we're going to roll up on them like, hey, what you doing out here? Do you need us to call your parents? We could bring you home. Like, that's the type of people we are. That's, that's the type of people we grew up. So I don't live abroad. I live in the States. <clears throat> yeah, but one of the neatest things happened to me when I was in Iceland a couple of years ago. At the second Airbnb that I stayed at, I wanted to do just some day hiking because I was exhausted from a very long day that ended in climbing a volcano in the middle of the night the night before. Oh, God. So I asked the Airbnb host, I'm like, so where can I walk? And he goes, anywhere. And I said... Yeah, but at what point will I be trespassing? When do I cross property property mm, lines or their landmarks that I need to keep in mind? And he smiled and he said, we don't have that here. You can walk anywhere. And I was like, what, no Bubba with a shotgun going to come out and tell me to get off his land? She and he kind of laughed. <laughs> they just don't do that there. I Life was fearless. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized that you no longer fear? Listen, when I live in Germany, the amount of, like, maybe it was just Bonn, but even Berlin, mm, well, uh, okay, basically, I would be, you know, goofed out of my mind. It would be 1.45 in the morning, I'd be taking a public transportation bus home by myself because I lived alone, well, with my husband, but, like, no roommates, and then I would walk the 10 minutes to my house from the bus station in the middle of the night. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm cool, let me listen to a podcast. One time, I also, one time I fell asleep on the bus. Like I said, and I woke up and I was like 20 stop, like not 20 stop, I was 20 minutes away from my stop. And I was like, well, that's not good. So I just got off and walked the 20 minute walk. I also had a very, very loud alarm. <laughs> if you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized that you no longer fear? I'm not afraid of the outside. And I know that that sounds stupid, but as an American that has just relocated to the UK, I'm sat outside in my garden. It's a little chilly, but it's not bad because I'm from the north in fucking America. So, uh, but, you know, it's a little chilly, but it's quiet. There's no, there's no yelling, screaming, bottle smashing. I'm not afraid my neighbors are going to try to unalive me. I'm not afraid that they're going to steal anything. Like, it's completely normal if you are not here to what pick up a package she that you from? ordered from the post the NART? to literally drop it off at a neighbor's house, and they will just keep it for you. Uh, I, when people walk here, I'm significantly less afraid of being hit by a car uh, or getting lost. Wait. I mean, the only thing left to be afraid of here is ghosts because it's ancient as heck here, but, like, I'm not even afraid of ghosts. So this has all been very novel. It's nice and quiet. I, I, I'm... I requested time off from their boss, and their boss was...
just wondering why they made a big deal out of wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. They... Um, <laughs> half the things that she listed, she should have just moved to the south. I didn't really catch much of what she was really going with it. Because I think I missed what she said she was originally from and what she moved she from to. from NARC. Did she say New NARC? York? No, the No, NARC. it was NARC. Somewhere up NARC. Oh. She should have just moved to the south for some of those problems. I mean, I, I support her moving, but... Somebody gave the package to the neighbor to hold from? She gave the pack. She was listing things that, that she could do in the UK. Okay. Ask I mean, your neighbor. First of all, she says she afraid of the outside just sitting out outside. It's people quiet. People have different different lifestyles. Yeah, because if we go outside right now, it'll be quiet. Like, if me and Dion went do a reaction outside, they would tell us, hey, y'all out. Y'all waking up my child. It's that quiet outside. Mm-hmm. Just move neighborhoods or cities or state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Continue. That video is so good at pointing out all of the things that we live in fear of in the U.S. And the one in particular that gets me is the idea that I have to fear of losing my job every time I have to call out of work. And, like, I have a part-time job. Um, that I, I, I can only work part-time because I am also a full-time mom. But I'm so scared of losing my job. And it's been so clear to me, like, the fear is ever-present this past week because I've had to call out of so many shifts. Yeah, they like to cancel And I'm people. just like, I keep over-explaining in every email whenever I have to call out because I'm like, I have RSV and oh. I don't want to get anybody else sick. I don't want to get anybody else with young kids sick. And, but I'm so afraid of losing this job because, like, I really need it. And I don't have paid sick time or anything. So, you know, like... Job. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized that you no longer fear? American here. I've lived uh, abroad for 14 years. Four years in Switzerland, nine years now in England. I feel like he made this video because of a comment that I made on one of his videos the other day. I was on a night out in Birmingham the other day, and I heard fireworks going off in the street. It wasn't bonfire night, but... I know you guys have leftover fireworks after bonfire night and for like a couple weeks after you just shoot them off for random times just for fun in the street. But the first thing that came to my mind was shooting. There's a shooting. And I had like massive panic come on. And the, my friend that I was out with saw it in my face and he goes, hey, it's cool. You're not in America anymore. Those are fireworks, not a shootout. So the fact that I don't have to worry about random massive shootings, um, yeah, that, that's, that's a nice thing now. If you're an American that has moved abroad, what are the things you've realized? Yeah, because bullets do go through random homes. Right. Bullets do go through random ki uh, cars. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I understand. But again, I just think it's all about your location. There are some locations you won't have those problems. You won't see cop cars. You won't hear ambulance. Right. You won't even hear gunshots unless you see a kid slapping their bat on the ground. Right. Stuff like that. But Yeah, I do agree with the, the mass shootings. So. Yeah. Yeah, but I do understand the random, you know. But the mass shootings, that's something that, oh, Lord, I just, ooh, don't let me be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You won't. Is that you no longer fear? So I'm an American currently living in Canada. Um, and everything that this original poster already, like, mentioned are things that I would have said. Um, so I uh, don't have anything to add in that regard. But what I sort of will contribute is that about six months into me living here. I've lived here for um, a year. It'll be a year next month. Um, about six months into living here, I all of a sudden felt this extreme wave of emotion and like physical release in what almost felt like as somebody with an anxiety disorder oh, it wow. almost felt say, like i was anxiety. coming down from an anxiety attack wow. out of absolutely nowhere like everything was going completely fine in my life nothing had happened and i couldn't figure out where this huge release was coming from and i did a lot of reflecting on it and i realized that it was my body finally wow. beginning to release the trauma of having lived in the United States for 23 years. Like, my body actually <laughs> began to physically process just the daily lived trauma. Of so I, I just wonder, like, is what a lot of people, when they speak about the U.S., because I understand, but I wonder, like, is this a lot of experience experiences that they're having, or is this things that they have just... Are they fearful to have happen to them? Cause that's the difference. Mm. 
you know, you can look at a scary movie and be like, oh, wow, that's very scary. Hope it never happens to me. And your life right. is always good, but you never have that experience. Right. Again, so it goes back to the girl who was talking about walking around at night having to be on guard. And that's why I shared my experience because uh, we live in America. We've lived in America all of our life. We have been learning about so many different cultures, have been sharing what we appreciate about other cultures, about, you know, the health system, I mean, health care system, different things like that. Um, but if you have not experienced something for yourself, just say you're scared. It's not your experience nah, to just speak say, on. just say you're scared. Like, yeah, if it's something that happened in the news and it's not something that happened to you, why are you taking that as your own? I can't say I was attacked at night. I've lived in New Orleans. I've lived in um, Baton Rouge. I've lived in smaller cities like New Iberia, Lafayette. Those are places in, in Louisiana. Nothing has ever happened to me walking fact, fact. as a kid, as a teenager, as an adult at night. Nothing has ever happened to me. That's why we always say, yes, there are these bad things that happen in the United States, but... These things have never happened to us, so that's why we try to show y'all, like, we're not people that walk around um, fearing for our lives, but no. we have had run-ins with police. We, our relatives have been beaten by police. Like, we can speak on things like that. Right, you know? because it's embedded in us. We right. have that, 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 that lingo and that style of life has already a general, like, it's, it's us, we're, we're, we're admitted in it. And you know I feel like we are the perfect people to share our experiences because we've lived in the projects. We've lived in the suburbs. We've lived in luxury. We've lived in poverty. Right. Well, no, we didn't really live in poverty, but we've, you know, we've been on welfare before. So, yeah. I just think that people just have that kind of, they have them too mixed up because they say one thing, but they never really experience it. They right. say the stove is hot, but they never touch the hot stove. Right. You know what I'm saying? Being from the United States and having just lived in Canada for six months, not gone through anything extraordinary here, just taking myself out of the environment of being in the United States was this huge trauma release <laughs> for my body. Like, it was the first time that my body actually felt safe somewhere. Um, so that was really, really fun to go through uh, and to realize that that is um that is what I put myself through for twenty two. <laughs> now I do I can say that you can look at a group and be like, and, and see the fussing and the arguing and all that stuff and know that I don't like being around this type of stuff. Right. You can say I that. that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like I already know I had I have Hello? not been in the proximity no? No, of a mass shooting, but I have been in the proximity of shootouts. Mm -hmm. My school have had to get on lockdown because of a shootout. Oh, yeah, nearby. my school done lockdowns, all that good yeah, stuff. So, what do they call that? Uh, bomb threats? Yeah, yeah. About, Jesus Christ. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, I'm really curious if any other Americans living abroad have gone through that same thing. Yeah, so that was a good one. That really was. That was a good one. Some of the things that we already knew about, though. But I think, like, as you go through these videos and you hear come some of the same things over and over again, you start to ask yourself, are these people really experiencing, experiencing these yeah. things to want to not be around these, or, 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 like, even be near these type of environments? Like, I understand healthcare. Yeah, we all went through yeah, healthcare. Yeah, you know we, all, we all, we all. We all got to go to the doctor someday. We all going to see that that bill is ridiculously large yeah. compared to living abroad and you don't have to pay no more than $50. So. Yeah, sometimes you don't even have to pay for prescription and all that. We appreciate that about yeah. other cultures. Mm -hmm. We wish we had that here. I believe I was watching Kamala Harris Kamala say Harris, something yeah. about we need that here. So, yeah, we appreciate that. Ha having a, I've given birth. Mm -hmm. I've had to pay out of pocket. <laughs> 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 you know, I've had to submit my insurance. Y'all know about my $58,000 uh, delivery bill. Mm. Okay? So, yeah, there's some things that we do appreciate about other cultures. But on the flip side, you got to think about, you got to ask yourself, why don't we have that here? Will we be restricted by certain things of having what they have here? You know, because, like, our political scene is so, oh, Jesus Christ, it give me a headache. Yeah, yeah, it's a little so, different. So, yeah, yeah. But I think, that. like, 
the United States is a big place. I know one of the things that you guys have been wanting to know for the longest time is if we were to move abroad, where would we live? We answered that question on our vlog channel. That video has not come out yet, but it's coming out very, very soon within the next couple of days, babe. Yeah. Yeah, so um, stay tuned for that video. We finally answered the question. I think we went in depth a little bit. Yeah. Of where we would live and a little snippet. why we a would little, live there. A little small snippet. You know, y'all got to wait for the video to come out. So yes. wait for that to come out. It's coming out pretty soon, a few more days from now. Um, yeah, be on the and lookout we for that. actually answer the question. All the so if you are not subscribed to our family channel, Life With Them, Check it out. make sure you subscribe. Um, it's on the channel. It's 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 Life With Them. Life With Them. D E M. In other words, check out the end screen and you can yes, subscribe yes, yes. to the video or that channel there. You can yes. check it out like that. Yeah. So like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way. As well as our joint feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Send in your reaction request through our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace.